we can discuss some more ideas as well. With that, let's move on and talk about a, uh, a corporate. Gold's Rich Properties reported its Q2 numbers with a decline in sales, bookings and volumes on both a sequential basis as well as versus last year. But the company did see an increase in its collections this quarter. Earlier, my colleague Sonal caught up with Pirocha Gold's Rich, the executive chairman of the company, and began by asking what he thought could have led to this weak operational uh, performance this time around and what the outlook is for the second half of the year. Listen in. We would have, of course, liked to do a little bit better this quarter, but I think overall the first half of the financial year has been very strong in both the comparative quarter as in Q2 of last financial year as well as Q1 were relatively high sales quarters. So I, I think the performance in, in the second quarter was reasonably solid, though we, we would have liked it to be a little bit better. But for the first half of the financial year, we've grown bookings by about 60%. Um, and have achieved just under 5,000 crore of booking value. Our full year guidance was to do a 10,000 crore booking value number. We feel that we're well set to, to achieve that and hopefully exceed it. So feeling very good about the financial year as a whole. Um, if we are able to get to that 10,000 crore number I mentioned, that will represent a growth of 27% year on year. Um, as you rightly pointed out, collections grew quite smartly during the quarter to just under 2,000 crore, and our operating cash flows from being just over break-even in Q1 were about 720 crore positive in, in the second quarter. So overall, I think operations were reasonably strong. We do expect, as is usually the case, for the second half to be considerably stronger than the first half of the financial year. So hope to, as I mentioned, get to that 10,000 crore number. And equally importantly, um, I think it's a very important year for business development. We've set a minimum expectation of adding new projects with a total booking value potential of over 15,000 crore uh, for the full year. So far, year to date, we're at about 6,000 crore. But given the business development pipeline, we're very confident of achieving that 15,000 crore goal. Okay, so 9,000 crore rupees is what you're expecting in the second half in, in terms of business development. In that case, I specifically wanted to ask you about the Mumbai market because that has been doing well uh, for all the royalty companies. But for you on a quarter on quarter basis, uh, bookings have come in at 565 crore rupees, which compares with 1,000 crore rupees in the quarter gone by. What happened here? Is it because of delay in execution of projects? Is it because of lower demand? Can you give us a macro view as well? No, not at all. Actually, we had two big launches in the in the first quarter. So we had our best ever quarter for sales in Mumbai uh, last quarter. So I think it's just a base effect. If we look at the first half sales in Mumbai, they would have grown by, uh, I don't have the exact figures, but uh, probably doubled over the previous financial year. So so I think the, the Mumbai growth story for us is intact, but, but we did have two big launches in, in Q1, which of course, um, excuse the quarterly performance, but I think we're very confident of delivering very, very strong growth in Mumbai this year, alongside the other focus markets we have of Pune, Bangalore and NCR. Okay, so you are talking about 15,000 crore rupees of a pipeline in terms of business development, 6,000 crore rupees is already done. What does it do to your CapEx plans and debt in particular? Yes, I know uh, it, debt equity is still below that 0.1 mark, but absolute debt has risen. Will you continue to invest? And in that case, what would peak absolute debt look like for the company? Yes, we'll certainly continue to invest. I think, you know, we, we did a QIP uh, last financial year to ensure that we were well capitalized and that the balance sheet had the capacity to significantly invest because we did believe the real estate cycle was turning and that any projects added over this period were likely to be uh, very lucrative ones for the company. Um, we've typically been comfortable with a net gearing of anywhere from 0 0.5 is to 1 to 1 is to 1. Um, we're currently at 0 0.16 is to 1, so I think that indicates to us that there is significant capacity for further investment, and we would like to see a, at least another 5,000 crore of net investment into business development take place over this uh, next 12 or so months. Okay, interesting. So, in a scenario that we are in right now, uh, Piroj Shah, are price hikes still on the cards? That is something we saw in the last year, last few quarters. Do you think that will continue for bigger players like yourself? And have you seen more market share gains? Of course, we've been talking about consolidation. But has that story continued? Because in tier two cities, we are seeing uh, that smaller players are also starting to do well. 
I think the consolidation story is very much uh, intact. Uh, of course, as the sector starts to do better, as it has over this past year, uh, a lot of developers will will see improved conditions. But I think most people are seeing um, the stronger developers growing very disproportionately compared to the rest of the sector, given the inherent advantages in access to capital, access to customers, and so on. Um, and I do expect that trend to continue. We've seen um, in our own results, as I mentioned, a 60% growth year on year in the first half. Um, we expect a similarly strong performance in the second half of the financial year. And we do could see that the trend of leading developers gaining market share is one that has been consistently evident over the last five years. And we expect will continue uh, to gather steam over these uh, next few years. And as I mentioned, given the kind of business development activity we're seeing, we, we do see the ability to grow uh, the, the company ahead of uh, market growth levels. Okay, and what about price hikes in that case? Industry is still looking at steep price hikes or you think this is done for now at least considering that interest rates are also hike, uh, being hiked? You know, I think it's a dynamic environment. We'll have to see how inflationary pressures play out, how interest rates play out. But my sense is that usually what happens in, in property market cycles is that in the early stages of the cycle recovery, the recovery is more apparent through volume growth, as we've seen over the past uh, couple of years. But that at some part uh, uh, thereafter, you usually do see relatively sharp price increases. We have seen some price increases, but I think so far it's been more to pass on the kind of inflationary uh, activity that's been evident. But I think we will see significant price increases over this next three, four years. It, one has to keep in mind that while interest rates have increased over the last six months, they are increasing from an all-time low base. And even if you look at mortgages today at eight to eight and a half percent, that is quite low by historical standards. The last time we were in a boom period about 10 years ago, uh, interest rates were for mortgages were at about 11%. So I think affordability for residential real estate remains quite strong by any historical comparison with the possible exception of last year. Um, and unless, you know, mortgage rates start inching into the double digit territory, um, we don't see them as likely to cause too much uh, damage to demand at current levels. All right, that is the management of Godrej Properties. They are saying that H2 of this year will be better than what we saw in the first half. They're also on track to achieve their, um, you know, booking value of 10,000 crores and also the gross developable, uh, developable value for FI23, which is at around 15,000 crores. But with that, we're going to get into a short break now. When we come back, we're going to talk about some key earnings which are due today. The big ones are Aisha and Bata. So let's stay tuned. We'll bring you the estimates.